Last month, we saw Stephen Miller come from three strokes behind to tie Nate Sexton at the end of round two at the 22nd annual Eric C. Etter Champions Cup. Will Stephen have what it takes for the win? Stay tuned as Disc Golf Monthly starts now. Welcome to another edition of Disc Golf Monthly. We're in Newtown, Pennsylvania at Tyler State Park for the 22nd annual Eric C. Yetter Champions Cup Disc Golf Tournament. Hello everyone, I'm Carl Cubbage. I'm joined by fellow disc golfer, the legend in Delaware, Jimmy McIlvain. Jimmy, we're here for day two of this event at Tyler State Park, and we've got a 27-hole final here with the top pros. Yeah, this is all going to be wooded. This is this is the uh, what everyone knows is Tyler. You know, this is... Uh Elevated baskets, uh, OB, couple of OB streams, couple of OB uh, grass, high grass things that are marked off. Uh, just uh, a lot of trees, too, a lot of trees. Well, Jimmy, being a tournament director, you know, you're from a world-renowned course like uh, Iron Hill. What's it going to take here at Toller for the pros to navigate and get an edge over the competition? Uh, variety of shots. When you're playing woody courses like this, uh, variety shots also look for like some guys we're going to be following you're going to see a lot of mid-ranges these guys have the power to throw mid-ranges off the, off the tee pad uh you get a little bit less of severe kicks when you are off a little bit with a mid-range you get a better you know float down straight landing rather than the skip off landing so uh it's a little bit different golf uh preferably you know for, for me i prefer that type of golf uh it, it's very technical there's you know even though you can because of the length of these holes, you have to throw in some power, but you better be accurate with your power. Well, Jimmy, you know, when we cover these events, we cover the top card, but we have a lot of depth at these type of events. You never know when somebody can strike from the back. Yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, we've seen it, you know, a couple of years ago. We saw Mike Moser do it at Iron Hill. We've seen, you know, other guys just, you know, come off of, you know, from the bottom of the cards. You know, uh, it happens all the time. So, yes, on, on a course like this, and at a tournament like of this size, yes, you have to watch out for the people coming from behind. Well, Jimmy, who are the top three pros that we're going to follow here on day two of the uh, Champions Cup event? Okay, leading the tournament with a 126 is Andrew Fish from Baltimore, Maryland, and tied for second place. With a 127 is Stephen Miller from Falmouth, Virginia, and Nate Sexton from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Well, Jimmy, what can you tell us, tell our viewers about these uh, top three pros and the mix that we're going to see here? Uh... These are some seriously wooded players. I mean, I guess that's how they ended up on the top card. Uh, Nate, of course, is from North Carolina. Uh, Steven, you know, like I said before, he, you know, he plays a lot of the wood courses. I know for a fact he likes Iron Hill. Andrew Fish, even though he's from Baltimore, is actually originally from North Carolina. Uh, speaking about someone throwing mid-ranges, watch him throw a lot of mid-ranges through here. Uh, he's an old. He actually started an ultimate player. He's only been playing disc golf for two, like I think it's two and a half years or something. It's pretty insane. I mean, his rating is just is he's just come out of nowhere, and he's got serious game. I mean, <laughs> the dude can play, especially in the woods. Well, that should be a pretty exciting, folks. We're going to be getting right into it. Before we do, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll get all the action here at the Eric C. Yetter Champions Cup tournament. Stay with us, folks. All right, folks, here we are at day two, 27-hole coverage of our top card here. We've got Andrew Fish at 126. Stephen Miller and Nate Sexton, one stroke behind. Should be a great round here. We're starting at Basket East 1, par 4, 490 feet.
Andrew right down the middle. This hole makes a hard right when you come out of that opening. Yeah, it's just a 90 degree turn. And there's not much advantage really to make the turn either. You're, uh, I mean, when there Andrew, is some OB you have to deal with there. Right. So when Andrew just threw straight out, it was a lot easier. Nate got that one down low, pumped it out. Just caught a tree. You could see the flag there. The OB is pretty close in that high grass off to the left. Nothing like making a blind shot and having no idea what's going on. Going right at it. All right, Nate did go out of bounds. Yeah. Look at that unique flip style. Setting up for his putt, but he pours it right in. Jimmy G said, Andrew has not been a touring pro that long. He's really shot up there in his uh, yeah, rating. Th yeah, this is, he's, uh, I, I was shocked when I met him last year and he was like t less than two years playing i'm like whoa two birdies in a par we're moving on folks to basket east three par five 797 feet jimmy for our viewers uh tyler's going to be a east and west course the 36 hole so that's why you're seeing these east west designations on the 27 holes we're going to cover beautiful shot there you can see this club stacks up the uh, logs yeah. and makes walls and little tunnels you have to shoot through. And he caught one of the walls right there. I love the, the tee pads, Jimmy, how they flare from wide to narrow on some of those. This is a long hole. Yeah, Steven's going out for the thumber over the top. Yeah, if you get stuck in there, it can be uh, trouble yeah. getting out. Yeah, see, Andrew turned over on his drive a little bit and ended there. That's why he was a little bit like, uh He got somewhere. <laughs> he didn't hit the first tree in front of him, which is a good thing in there. Not happy with that one. There is a player there. You can see him in the woods. I don't think he's out yet. Anything on that right side is just trouble. Well, the problem is there's OB on the OB road on the left side. And, I mean, that's what you you sort of like in the back of your head you try to avoid. And it puts you in here. All right, that's shot. out. He's going to have a look at that one. You know, when I play this, when you get in trouble, I feel beat down after this hole. It can be a brutal hole. Well, if you take a big number here, that's one of those things you have to remember, that it can be a brutal hole for everyone. And yeah, just because you throw down a big number doesn't mean a lot of other people aren't too. Big jump putt.
Nice over the rim and in. Something for everybody there, Jibby. Got a three-stroke lead by Andrew at the top. Moving on to uh, basket east four, par four, 464 feet. If you go to the right on this one, it's a very steep drop off and you can be right in the water. Uh -oh. And we heard the uh-oh. <laughs> And once again, though, the problem is that there, there's a road left on this hole the whole way. So you can't bail out left either. This hole more or less does an S. It goes, bends to the right and comes back around. That looks like a decent shot there. That ended up nice. If you had hit the right side of that tree, that would have been history. Yeah. Nate actually overthrew this a little bit. It's a weird angle. Roll. This is one of those holes that you almost have to be little, huh? dead on your line. You know, on the drive, like. Yeah, probably a wave down there. Well, if he didn't leak too far down, that won't be too bad. Get over the log. There we go. Nice shots. Andrew was almost OB. That's the road you were talking about, Jimmy. Yep. And that's going to be a really nice shot. Yeah, that is a huge save from turning it over off the drive. Now we join Nate on his fourth throw here. Just got caught up in something there. Yeah, there is just a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, that's why it made him more impressive. Andrew got out on his. It, it's it's bad down anything on the right. Well, we've got a par and two bogeys there. Four-stroke lead by Andrew on the top. We're on basket east five. It's a par four, 422 feet. Right away. Yeah, that you're gonna find if he's on his game, that's gonna be his game here. And this is what Nate's gonna do the whole time. He's gonna throw flick shots. He's gonna try to power out past him. It's like we've got a, maybe an overhand coming up. The OB road to the right, you've got to be careful of. Nice and smooth approach. Even some work here. See if you can grab the three. High jump putt. Oh. Just off the top. Nice. Andrew right in the center. Two birdies and a par. Folks, we're moving on to...
basket, east six. It's a par four, 419 feet. Uh, sponsored by. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have Amanda on the left, OB Road on the right, and long. With man made logs and mulch piles, right? You bet. Cranks All that right. one way up there. That is all volunteer work to stack all of those sticks there to clear the fairways. Nate found himself close to OB over there. And there's the mulch pile. Good luck. Good, luck. Good shot. Nate with yeah, a Nate. very compact dead on center uh, release, Jimmy. Starframe birdies around for the three pros. That's going to take us on to basket E7, which is a par three, 271 feet. Road OB on the right, water OB on the left and long. Big downslope on the left. You can go forever. <laughs> oh, if that comes back. That should be nice. Right to the basket. Now, the problem is that is a tough green, though, to land on. You can think you're on that green and be totally gone. Oh yeah, forehand no less. That was good. Here's a nice shot as well. Oh, yeah. well done. Nice shot. Kicked away. And that's what I'm talking about. Check. <laughs> He's running to find out if he's stuck on it. If you go too far, you go see, down I, into the water. You see it below. Got to love that elevated position there. It's pretty extreme, though, because Thank you. no one attempted more than a five-foot putt on, on the hole. So. Nate pulls the birdie out there, tightens it up. Only a two-stroke lead by Andrew. We're here at Basket East 8. It's a par 4, 505 feet. This is treacherous. You could see the water's just off to the right. Early tree hit could take you right out of the hole. You're way down there. Yeah, he got, he got over the drop off. That's nice. Past the rise, it dips down, and you've got a valley, and then the basket's up on a hill. It's a tight, it's up there. Now, the weird thing about Andrew is he does not throw rocks, though, even though he's an end of a sponsored player. What's he throwing for All that? All those uh, mid ranges are like Mako's. And sharks, which is very strange to someone at that level. Absolutely. He says he just doesn't like the way they feel in his hand. That basket is right up at the top of that ridge. They're going to have some interesting putts.
Look at that that position, that basket position. See if Steven can can this one. That's a pretty view. Big jump putt. Andrew sends it up. And Slides back down. Back down. Go, Nate. Oh, yeah. He ends it. Wow, that was a nice recovery after sliding down. Seeing some great camaraderie by these three pros, Jimmy. Great etiquette out there, having a good time. It's tightened up. Look at this. One stroke lead. Here we are at Basket East 9, a par 5, 558 feet. It is nice to see people actually playing, you know, and being nice to each other. <laughs> there is a road off here to the right. And you do have some trouble on the left. That was a pretty shot. Andrew's off the fairway. He's got to bring it back in. Good delivery. This hole is actually shaped like an S. You've got to come one way and then curl back around, go down a hill. Cross a stream. Yep. <laughs> Basket's on a kind of a stone Middle. raised platform. You can see it all the way down there. Using a Nova, in of a Nova. Right there hits the base of the platform. Good finish, Steven. Look at that, we've got a tie here, Nate and Andrew. All right, Jimmy, we're on to basket East 10. It's a par three, 296 feet. And that's the traditional route. This is another uh, raised basket. Uh, Nicely landscaped, as you'll see as we get there. And the back door. I was waiting to see if That's the way I like it. to get yeah. there. It's a very straight shot. It's just a little tighter. Come on, get off. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where was that? I think Andrew got all the way through. Up oh, hits the basket. The deadly comebacker from <laughs> Nice Pot. 
That's just enough to mess with you, Jimmy, when you're used to putting with that basket level with your feet. <sighs> yeah, this basket will definitely mess with your head. It's messed with my head before, I'll put it that way. No problem there. I mean, from ground level, it's the platform is probably what seven, eight feet above, you know, the ground. All right, Andrew, back on top here with a one-stroke lead. Folks, we're here at Basket East Eleven, par four, five hundred and seventy-four feet. Don't want to get too caught up to the left. Look, I think that's the first trouble. time I didn't see him throw a mid range. I think, <laughs> I think he threw a T bird or something. Come to think of it, you don't want to be in the right or the left. No, this is <laughs> this this whole what you want to play this whole about as straight as you can play it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does bend a little left off of this T pad. I mean, just slightly. Mm -hmm. That's going to work really nice. Good shot. Oh. Tries the roller. Got such a smooth flip shot. Just tails off. Tough break on that one. Nate saves the par. Andrew gets his as well. So being down in the middle is a little bit overrated. Moving right <laughs> along. Basket East 12, par 3, 338 feet. This has some interesting basket positions here. There's a deer that just <laughs> cleared the area. Yeah, Jimmy, depending on when you play this course, it could be in a basket A, B, C. Right. You don't know if you're doing long or short. All kinds of variations I on this Nate, course. I think Nate tried to go the back ways. Now, there's the traditional hyzer I knew on the hole. Are you all right? Nate and Andrew both look like they try to come around the back way. Now, course. this has got that wall. they got a pretty big wall here from the back. You've got to get over that. Yeah, that's why I was actually shocked that you tried to go to the back. I mean, it, it, it's just not a... It's a blind of approach from there. Another elevated basket position here, Tyler. There's kind of a ditch just beyond that, so if you miss, then you got even more elevation coming you back up. You got a real up. elevated putt coming back the other way. Absolutely. Just as lucky as 
All right, two strokes. Andrew gets another one there. We're on Basket East 13, which is a par 5, 771 feet. This is a brutal haul. You have to get clean on this drive. Oh, too far. Tough early tree. Might be all right. You have to play this whole piece at a time. It right. bends around at the end. The yeah, baskets. that's what I mean. There's Elevated just so many things going on with this hole. I mean, this drive is easy to overthrow the landing area. At the end of that gap, they turn to the right, and then the basket's a little high in in between a couple of trees. See, Nate overthrew. I mean, really. He still got a long ways before that turn. And he did not make Frank it. Frank one down. Getting stuck in that right can be jail. Trying to turn around the corner. You can see what this is doing to the top pros. You can imagine what it does to the AMs when they play it in long position. It is brutal. <laughs> There's that interesting pin position. Ooh, sit. Roll away, not too bad. Well, the angles on this, the rollway can be bad. That's just the These point. These trees can come into play because just like that, they're because they're close to the basket. <laughs> Tough break. Steven hit that tree twice. Well, if you end up in a certain spot, there, I mean, you have no pot. You have to try something. I mean... All right, here we are on Basket East 14, par 4, 398 feet. All right, there's three Mandos on this hole. That first one, and then there's a double one you got to shoot right in between. Thus, the, the left. Uh, three Amandos, right? Isn't that the name of the hole? Now you can see Andrew's going to try to shoot through the double Mando. you got to go right through him. Up, oh, he hits the left one. The basket's just beyond that uh, post rail fence section. There's two sections there. Andrew's definitely got an ultimate background with those flick shots and stuff. Nice putt. You can just tell the difference in his and Nate's flick shots. They're just so, you know. High in the chain, slides right down the basket. Stroke lead. As we move on to basket East 15, which is a par four, 460 feet. There, huh? Wow. Big pull there. Ooh. 
There's a creek bed to the right of this, Jimmy, when it's got water in it, so be. <laughs> when it's got water, yeah, it is. It, it can be a little bit. Yeah, that, that creek bed can be a little bit off and on, whether or not there's water there, when there's that oh. water there. And then you actually have to cross the creek near the basket. That looked decent. And Steven might be on the other side I of the creek. He's, he's <laughs> on the other side of the creek, safe. And you can see across that bridge is where the basket is. Good approach. Well, that just tied Andrew with the putt right there. Look at that. Tied at 178. All right, let's see what we have here, folks. We're on the basket. E16, par 5. 883 feet. We've got that OB grass to the right, Jimmy. OB grass I've to the right. I've been there many times. Woods to the left. There's also OB dead straight away left. That's the way to steer away from the tall grass. He can throw a driver. See, I told you. The basket's in the dark way up there in the under the trees. Got to still crank it out. Yeah, you got to get up to the tree line and then go left again. Now, Andrew's got a lot of distance there, and he actually has better, you know, layup area. Yeah, he did crank it way up there, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, drive. there's no, I mean, I guess someone could, but there's almost no way to three this hole. So you have to just to play it where they did. You've got to get one of those high cuts that just drop into the basket. Right. I mean, and that's the other thing. Coming in from out, uh, out on the fairway too far away, I mean, I don't know if you could make the, it is almost a 90 return from out there. And there's that unique little Just ultimate flick shot. Nice, easy-looking flick. What's well, it? It's an ultimate flick rather than the traditional disc golf type. Let's see if you can get this putt to keep the tie at first. Off to the left. All right, so Andrew's got that one-stroke lead. He had a drop-in uh, on this last putt there. It's tight, folks, as we go to basket E17, par four, 567 feet. More OB, that same grass. We make a right turn. You can see the right. flags. More grass on the right side. All along that uh, fairway to the right. And the trees on the left side. The basket is over the ridge to the right in that nest of trees to the right. And they're just all throwing down to, to more or less landing area. There's no need to like totally try to go for this.
He wanted it to sit because you could see if he got a skip, he'd be in trouble. Looks like he's going to forehand through just to the right of that tree and get it to come back around into the trees to the right. You mean like that? Bending around nicely. <laughs> Should be all set for the birdie. Yeah, definitely too much hazard. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the point. The I mean, tree. like I said, they're, they're all aiming for this spot just to throw that shot. Unless you want to the backhand. <laughs> that's not bad there. Not at all. Oh, Andrew just off the rim. Grab some chains. Steven with the high shot drops it in. Well, let's see, Nate, if he makes this one, we got a tie again at the top. That was a beautiful birdie there. Look at that, folks. We've got a tie at the top, 186. Pretty exciting here, folks. We're going to take a quick break. Please stay with us. We've got a lot of action left here at the 22nd Annual Eric C. Yetter Champions Cup. Please stay with us right back. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And unconventional methods, common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Welcome back, everyone. We're on basket. East 18 is a par four, 320 feet. This is a pinball alley here, Jimmy. Yeah, but if you hit this, it's so sweet. This has got a Mando. You got to come around the baskets up on the hill on the left, left of the bathrooms. Get a high hyzer and cut around the there mando. It, You're in right good that. position. <laughs> That's a good shot right there. Pretty much pinned the B position, right? Up all the way left of the bathroom up on a uh, platform. That was great. That was just a great That's shot. not too bad. Yep, he did pin the B position. It's a pretty easy shot from there. Yeah, it, that's a nice phrase. Right, to it makes the it makes the the hole longer because you're actually playing past the hole to come back to it. But it's not a bad line. Over no, there. the tree lines make it so much easier. Oh, to do that. just off the rim, a little roll away, not too bad. Oh, I was right there too. <laughs> It's a tough way to give up the lead. He knows he should have made the putt. Whoa. Whoa Steven just <laughs> slid that one over the rim and in. And here we go. Andrew back on top by a stroke. It's back and forth. We're going to move on here to basket west three. It's a par three, 211 feet. Now we're getting into my range, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, on this designation where they have east and west course, east is going to be 1 through 18, and west is going to be 19 through 36. So when somebody says they ace 14, if you had them both 14, you wouldn't know what 14 you're right, on. Right, so they, they went made sequentially. it back and forth. Nice lazy shots because it's only 211. To keep the lead on this shot, just caught the basket and dropped down. Not high enough. Look at them just chatting it up while they're playing, Jimmy. That's nice. I'm, I'm serious. They're, 
Usually you get to cut the tension with the knife there on the lead card. Yeah. All right, a birdie by Nate, and he ties it up again. We're just back and forth here. Who's going to finish strong? We're on to basket west four. It's a par four, 361 feet. I think it's going to be the first time we've actually seen this basket in the right position. We almost no always see it in the left. Big overhand. Boy, he ripped that one. Andrew does the same thing, but that looked effortless. It's going to work. It's the middle of the fairway. <laughs> this is actually a nice place to be. That's a good line he's got for the uh, forehand. Oh, just needed to get by that one. All right, he's in good shape. That's a putt. Oh, get around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk to it, Andrew. Wow. There's the flag. He's close. Ooh. Great play. And they put it right up there. He'll have an easy par. All right, the birdie for Stephen Miller. Boy, hi, just cans it. <laughs> I don't know how you do that with a big win, Jimmy. That would be a tough putt. Andrew pours his in. Then he takes the lead again. This is a nice downhill hole, Jimmy. It doesn't look that it's much from this camera angle, but it is downhill. No, it's a big downhill. I mean, this is like a step through a stable mid-range or, or even somebody's going to probably throw a putter off of here with a stable putter. Just let it drift down and sail off to the left. And Nate did that one nicely. Threw a dart all the way down the middle and just floated it. Andrew with a nice recovery. Big skip there. Not sure how far that drifted away from the basket. Pretty far. Got that up. Oh. Wow, hits the uh, flag on top of the basket. Tied again. No, Sexton's got the lead. It's back and forth, Jim. We've seen quite a few leads. Missed changes. the fact that it was a bogey, yeah. All right, here we are on basket west six. It's a par four, 476 feet. There is a parking lot down to the left on this one, Jimmy, that's out of bounds. And beyond the basket, the road's out of bounds as well. Go over there. Yeah, 
That was sweet. Yes. Yep. Nice shot. Anytime you do a hard shot, it doesn't hit the woods, it's a nice shot. <laughs> Bending around as well. Yeah. Nate Look, with a backhand. I'm trying to say he can throw a backhand. With a backhand. And, and a nice a, backhand. Pumped it up there nice. Okay, that was too lazy. <laughs> That was a big drive. That was money right there. Great recovery shot. For the birdie. That was a run. for the easier birdie. Yep, nice birdie. See, that's the putt you want for birdie right there. That was beautiful. <laughs> Great length on a second shot. Trust me, Nate was thinking that row behind him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nate still up top there with the 202. Here we are, folks. We're on basket west seven. It's a par four, 450 feet. Now, this is one of the newer holes, too, right? This is. Got the temporary fly pad down go there. Go around it, go around it. Bend up to the right and then up on another mount. It's got some interesting holes, some of these newer ones they came up with. Look at that nice basket position up on the hill. They've gotten pretty creative with these basket placements here at Tyler. So how much of it hills on the other side? Quite a bit, right? It tails off pretty yeah. similar. All right, if Andrew makes this, he could tie it back up. Bam. Back and forth, Jimmy. I don't know if we've seen so much back and forth. It's been a while since it has we've seen been a that while. much, Jimmy. All right, folks, here we go on Basket West 8. It's a par 4, 444 feet. This is another hole I don't think we've seen this pin position before. This is lovely because it goes up onto that flat. It breaks down to the left, and then it just goes all the way down to the left. It's got some treacherous positions down there, too. Right. This is the one that's tucked in. A lot of D on that first shot really set you up. That was a good throw. There is OB to the right here, the road to the right, if you hit an early tree. And there's a Mando, and they just asked about it, and this is the reason. With the pin position that's down, he can go through the woods here. That's why I've got that Mando up there early. Right. This is a nasty pin position to actually stick. It, it, it's much shorter than the other one, but... It's got it, a <laughs> steep drop, and you can just keep going. Yeah. 
Beautiful. You can see the angle that basket's sitting at. It is steep. Where's the next steeper? Down this way, and there's a path off to the right. Yes. Now, if they had been playing the other hole, Nate, Nate was in a really bad position, but pl considering playing this pin, it wasn't that bad. Birdies around. Okay, folks, we're moving to basket West 9, a par 5, 587 feet. This goes uphill. You don't want to get stuck to the left or even the right early because it's trouble. Down the chute with some distance and set up for your next shot. This is where we saw last month. There, you know, a couple of guys going the back route. Well, if that twists around back to center, he'll be all set. It's a good shot. So we're going to see the back door. Cranks it out. That was a nice shot. Up. Oh. Andrew went back door. And then the trunk, yep. And didn't. I think that's the first time we saw somebody go that way and did not make it. And it is bad. He got punished. And you can see he's still got some trouble in there with all those branches. That's always a good sound, no sound, when you're in the woods <laughs> trying to get out. See, I always take the fairway. I'm just a fairway guy. You know what I'm saying? I always take the fairway on this hole. Andrew for the birdie. Oh, just off the top. Almost curled it in. That's going to cost him the lead, Jimmy, and Nate's back on top. What a battle we have here, folks. Here we are. We're on to basket West 16. It's a par 3, 333 feet. This goes downhill out into the field, and there's some OB on the left, the road to the right. Yeah, the road really shouldn't come into play, but the, the OB on the left, it, it comes in quick. Things that look like a really nice shot could be sitting right there. Sitting OB the, big time. That's dangerous. Stay forward. Stay forward. They went around. Saddle. Check. You can see the OB, that darker grass. Yeah, you got the, the OB there. Right you also there. have a the, the a, like a built up mound that that drops off behind the baskets. Uh oh. He went over the OB. Whoa, nice that was shot. a bold shot there. <laughs> Beautiful nice execution. Putt. I don't think he's missed a putt this round. I, 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 I'm i sitting here like right now going, I don't believe it. <laughs> and Steven was OB. Yeah, you can see how close I mean, it is. That is close. To, yeah. Good recovery shot. There's nothing like being on that tee path that what you think is just a perfect shot and get down there and find mm. yourself an inch or two in OB. Uh. 
Folks, we're on to Baskets West 17. It's a par 3, 322 feet. Straight away through the trees. Good skip. Look at that. Put it close. Andrew, with that effortless drive, it just keeps going. Good penetration. There we go. The relatively easy nice. deuce right there. And he was the away player, and he was close. Everybody parked it. That's the kind of twos I like. Beautiful execution by all three players. Here we go. Nate still on top as we go to the last hole here, Jimmy. This is Basket West 18. It's a par four, 665 feet. There's a lot of OB on the left and it's quite narrow as there's a choke point they've got to be careful on. Swings it over the OB, coming back. Well, you just play to the choke point. I mean, that's this dig. You're trying it. to get as close as you can to make the next shot. Big pull. Andrew takes it down the tree line. He's in great position there. You cannot let your disc get away and hyzer away from you here. Up, hit the early train, kicked right. He's in a tough spot here. You can see that OB, and through that small area there, it tightens up. Now's when they want to throw hard. Crank it over the OB and bring Once it again, back. this might be the first time we've seen this position, too, because this is on top of a hill rather than on the island. Nice shot there. Go. Go, go, go. Nice. Everybody cheering it on. That's a great that shot. Is part. Just missed curling in. All right, let's see if Nate can make this. He will force a playoff here with Jeremy Coling, who's right on top on a further back card. Oh, what a tough break, Jimmy. So stupid. He was not that far away. Wow. That's tough. I don't know if he realizes that, you know. Well, he thought he was going to tie. He, he, he thinks he tied Andrew right now. Doesn't realize that Jeremy's behind him. Well, there we go. We've got a tie there between Andrew and Nate, but Jeremy Coling takes the 22nd annual Eric C. Yetter Champion Cup. We'll wrap it up right after this quick break. Please stay with us. Well, Jimmy, we got to see some great pay, but a big surprise with Jeremy Coling coming from behind on that car to take over. Yeah, we talked about that going into this. Uh, with the threesome, we don't get everyone on the card, uh, and that's what happened here. Jeremy coming from, like, fourth place, jumped up, and just, you know, <laughs> jumped ahead. And Nate right now is probably killing himself on that missed putt. Mm. I mean, I think he thought that missed putt was going into a playoff, that missed 
putt cost him, you know, first place, you know, a chance for the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, because he was playing so well up until that point. So, uh, and it's funny because Nate was throwing all the flick shots and he actually got beat by, you know, I guess you could call it better, a better flick shot. With the, well, you know, Jeremy, one of the top players yes. in the world. You never know when he's going to strike and come back from behind and take an Eddie did. Yes, he did. Well, we got to take our hats off to the great Bucks County Disc Golf Alliance group that runs this event. They always do a great job there. You probably noticed on the course the stacks of logs, the stacks of sticks. They're, they do some great course maintenance there at that course. Like the group of folks that you uh, work with in Delaware, Jimmy, great volunteers. Yeah, uh, Tyler has always had a large, large, large amount of people out there working. And, uh, you know... You're right. The, the little the little stick mounds and everything, the logs and everything, uh, the actual built up walls that you have to throw through, it, it gives a different feeling there. Well, we hope you folks will get out and play, Tyler. Now that it's going to be a 36 hole course, it's just going to be more exciting to get out there and play. Yeah. Well, folks, that's all we have for this edition of Disc Golf Monthly. We hope you join us next month. That's all we have. I'm Carl Kovic with Jimmy McElvain for Disc Golf Monthly, the show that takes you one step closer the sport of disc golf. I had, I had a uh, I had a good time. It was beautiful weather today. It was really nice being out of the rain, uh, which has just been everywhere this year. So um, always nice to finish in the nice sunny, beautiful weather. And uh, yeah, it's the first time that's ever happened for me coming from second card to win. So that's a really interesting thing, and I'll never forget it. So uh, thank you guys all very much. Appreciate it. <laughs>